Something call the coast guard. Talk about raining cats and dogs, our plumbing's in a right pickle. Fetch me my spanner, lad, while I stick me finger in the dike. I shouldn't bother with that, Gromit. It's still only a prototype. That's left over from our lunar landing. Best leave it be, lad. Bring me my spanner, lad. Don't do that, lad. We'll lose the lights. Just the job. Bring it here now, will you, lad? Well done. Our troubles are over. Whoops. Crikey. That was a shock. Best trip the circuit breaker, lad. And stay clear of the water. It's electric. Look out, lad. The tide's coming in. Best find another way to the circuit breaker. Have you gone, Crackers? You'll get yourself electrocuted! The tide's coming in fast, Gromit! Compressed rocket gas. Ex NASA. Now we're in a pickle and no mistake. Don't do it, lad. You'll blow yourself to smithereens. Lincoln Nora. Well done, Gromit. Corby fixed in a jiffy. Just a moment. Turn to the right. And now, it's safe to hit the light. That's better. Oh, there you are. Well, we'd best clean up. Crack on, lad. There's a lot to do. Sorry about the unseasonal weather. I'm afraid it means we'll have to put off our little trip to the seaside. Unless we bring the seaside to us. Look here, we've already got a cellar full of water. Just a few more items. There we are. And we can enjoy the seaside from the comfort of our own home. 
ho, ho, ho. Won't that be something, lad? We'll stay home for the holidays and have our own beach to boot. Lucky the rain's let up for now. I'll be back in a trice with all the necessaries. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming up. Have faith, lad. West Wallaby Street's first indoor beach will be ready in a trice. Sun, sand and beach umbrella coming right up. Better be careful, or I'll be in the cellar faster than you can say secret trap door. you up, lassie. Of a date. Surely you're not still thinking of the beach. It's freezing cold and might rain any moment. Ach, a little wet never dampened the spirits of my biscuit. Grab your wellies and we'll be off. Duncan, I really don't think so. You must admit, it's hardly beach weather, is it? It's perfect beach weather. Nothing like a wee nip in the air to keep you sharp. I'd rather stay warm and dry here at home, if you don't mind. Oh, dear. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, hello there, Wallace. Come and meet Duncan McBiscuit. He's an old friend. <laughs> and of course, you know my two precious darlings, Fuji Woo and Tinky Wee. Say hello to Mr. Wallace, angels. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, look, Gromit. It's your friends from next door. Cute little fellows. Oh, yes. They're show dogs, you know. Prize winners. They're my pride and joy. Well, I won't keep you. No, 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 no. Duncan was just leaving. Leaving with you, lassie? For a day on the beach? But what if there's a cloudburst? I don't consider thunder and lightning very pleasant beach companions. But there's no thunder and no lightning. Can you hear any thundering? Any cracking or booming? Well, can you? Maybe I can. Just hush your tongue a moment, will you? You can't hear no thunder, can you? Not even a wee tinkle. I suppose not. Oh, come on. We must act now, before the flood. Gather the townsfolk. We'll stack the sandbags to the north, south, and east. Still time, if we hurry. Look lively now, soda. No, 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 you can't dump these sandbags here. Just, uh, just wait a moment, Major, please. Tom Dithering, you dudderhead. The town's being swept under. There's not being swept under, Major. And you're beginning to be a public nuisance. Afternoon, Wallace. Oh, yeah. It's a stack of Stilton. Oh, was that the earth-shaking roar of thunder? Uh, well, actually, uh... It doesn't matter when it comes to the complex question of climate. A person should never really rely on his own senses. Only the experts really understand the weather. Oh? Quite a light, Mr. Paneer. It's a searchlight. I say, no shortage of candle power there. Right as the sun, don't you think? Wonderful for bringing in the big spenders. When the weather's fair, that is. I wonder, Mr. Paneer, where might a person acquire such a light? I'd be happy to lend you this one, but if the weather warms up tonight, I'll need it to advertise my super sore away sizzling summer sail. Oh. Thinking weather, eh, Wallace? It is rather gloomy. Like my business. Not a single customer all day. 
My sizzling summer sail has lost its sizzle. I'm afraid my summer sail won't be very sizzling this year. Sorry to hear that. No beach brollies left. Sorry. The burly bloke bought the last one, and he weren't very polite about it. What's the latest cheese of the week, I wonder? Stilton. And that reminds me, I just sent the truck out with your delivery. When you return home, you'll find it waiting patiently on your doorstep. Ah, just like Gromit. You know, Mr. Wallace, there's nothing like coming home to a faithful, loyal cheese. I quite agree. Hello, hello, hello. Afternoon, Mrs. Gabberly. Hello, Wallace. Lovely weather, isn't it? Well, uh, I... Uh... I'm joking, Pat. I know it's rotten. Had to cancel me holiday. That's a shame. Certainly is, being stuck with old misery guts here. I heard that! He don't miss a word I say, except when I ask him to do summit. Ah, sitting behind a till all day ain't exactly hard labour. What would you know about hard labour? I could run this place a sight better than you. If I had a mind, sir. If you had a mind? What will it be, love? Looking for something to read? Take your pick. I'll put it on your slate. More rotten weather on the way tonight, they say. All set. Hey, make sure he don't nick any sweets. Mind your own business. That old misery guts thinks he could run this shop. <laughs> he couldn't run a bath. It's good to see you, Wallace. But where's that clever dog of yours? Oh, just doing his chores around the house. Oh, he's a good one, he is. Did you hear the latest? Miss Flit's got a gentleman admirer. Folks say he's an old flame. Can you imagine? Uh... Not that she needs any more admirers flirting like she does. <clears throat> You're right about that. Stormy weather ahead, I'm afraid. Oh? Oh, no. After all that, my sizzling summer sail is ruined. I go on holiday, but the weather's a washout. Will the sun never shine on yours truly? I say, I wonder where a person might acquire such a life. You're welcome to borrow this one, Mr. Wallace. There won't be any sizzling summer sail tonight. Not in this blinking weather. That's very kind of you. Always happy to help. Oh, ho, ho. this light'll make a smashing sun. A special order for 62 West Wallaby Street. Stilton. One of my favorites. <clears throat> cute little fellas. Oh, they're more than cute, Mr. Wallace. They're show dogs. And they're far too delicate for wintry weather. Why, my precious puppets would turn to popsicles. <clears throat> ah, mind your own beeswax, you big boffin' bunts. Duncan, don't be so rude. I'll be sweet as honey when I'm buzzing round the beach with my best lassie. <laughs> I won't be buzzing anywhere in this bitter weather. Duncan, look at 
watch our death of food. <clears throat> you wouldn't go to the seaside today, would you, Wallace? You'd stay inside with a cosy cup of tea, inventing some clever thing, wouldn't you? It's certainly cosier indoors. Just so. Now, Duncan, it's time you were on your way. On my way? Felicity. I refuse to go out in a thunderstorm. Oh, there's no thunderstorm. You can't hear no thundering, can you? Maybe I can hear thundering. Just button your bagpipes for a moment, will you? Oh, yeah, it's mouth-watering. Oh, my gracious! That's thunder, all right. And it's nearly upon us. Oh, but sure, it may be thundering, but... But did you see lightning? There's no lightning to bother about us, sir. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not going to stay out here with you waiting to be struck by lightning. I'm going to seek shelter, and if you've any sense at all, Duncan McBiscuit, you'll do the same. Good day. What? Oh. What are you looking at, Jimmy? I'll just borrow this. Just the thing for our cellar-based indoor beach experience. Out with it. Uh, well, uh, if you'd like to unload these sandbags, I know just the spot. Just as I told you, the people are pleading for sand, and we've got to give it to them. I'd like to give it to you, you loony old goat. But if you've got a need for sandbags, Wallace, I hereby grant you permission. Oh? You grant permission? Indeed. Take all you want, Wallace. Inferno cheek. I'm the commanding officer here, you jumped up Jobsworth, and I hereby revoke permission. Can't you be cooperative just this once, Major? Cooperative? Don't know the meaning of the word. Sounds subversive to me. All right, Major, how about this? Why don't we ask Wallace here who's in command? This young Pongo? Hmm. Very well. Why not? Tell us, soldier, who holds rank here? Remember your training. Two fine flavors that work well together. We're talking about who's in charge, not flavors. Just a moment. Are you saying that instead of bickering over who's in charge, we should be working together as a team, like uh, steak and kidney? Uh, are you saying that in a crisis like this, we must act as one, like a well-trained commando unit? Actually, it's a sign... Exactly, a sign that we can now rise above our squabbles. Very well, then. Um, here's what we'll do. We'll send these sandbags off with you. Thank goodness. Well, I'll be off, then. I can hear an hot meat pie calling me name, yes I can. Ernest Dibbins, it's saying. It's tea time. Fetch the blinking ketchup, Ernest. Now then, soldier, all I need is your requisition form. Requisition form? That's right. Got to play by the book. Can't let the spies sabotage operations, can we? Spies? Surely you've heard about the spies from abroad. They're everywhere. Don't look so rattled, man. Just bring me your requisition form, and you'll soon be neck deep in splendid sandbags. Oh, right then. It's only for cheese, but... Give that here. Good heavens. Special orders delivered to 62 West Wallaby Street. 
You've done the service proud, soldier. Now, stand clear. No time for titter-chatter. I'm needed in West Wallaby Street. Uh, uh yes, sir. Nice to see you, Wallace. And we need the Riviera. Here we come. Great news, Gromit. All the goods have been gathered. Now it's time for some elbow grease, eh? To the cellar. Job done, Gromit. Time to relax on the beach, eh? We deserve a holiday. Just a minute. Such a lovely beach. It's a shame to keep it to ourselves when we could share it with paying customers. Just imagine West Wallaby Street Water World. A genuine beach house complete with its own all weather seaside in the cellar basement beach attraction. Oh, oh, we'll be surrounded by happy holiday makers. It'll be grand, Gromit. Honestly, Stay what's a waste of time? This man's ruining my blinking holiday. Half a mind to take ah, my book and say it in your home. sandwich. I was only teasing. Just ask that great big pudding Shut there. Up. I ain't no pudding yet. These dogs are disturbing time. the peace. Bylaws state that all livestock must Poppy be kept cock. under proper control My in public places. Fly, and they're not livestock. I want a refund. I want a refund and all. Refunds would indeed appear to be in order, Mr. Wallace. What do you say? Uh, uh, um, well, here at West Wallaby Street Waterworld, customer satisfaction is our top priority. If you'll just be patient, I promise we'll have everything under control by supper time. Uh... You've got till supper time, no later. Not much of an holiday so far, I'm sorry to say. Mm, those mutts are a threat to public <laughs> safety. Shop and never just a that bit man fruit display. calling my dears livestock. We can't afford to give refunds, Gromit. We've spent all our money doing the house up. This could be a financial disaster. What are we gonna do, lad? I never thought we'd have a house full of unhappy holiday makers. Bunch of morning minis, if you ask me. I'm having a grand old time. Well, that's one satisfied customer, anyway. There we are. This customer relationship management isn't so hard, is it, Gromit? There's hope for our little venture yet. You'd best get supper started. Make it a feast to remember. I'll see to our guests. We'll soon have a house full of happy campers, eh, lad? Hello, Wallace. Uh, I trust everything at West Wallaby Street Waterworld is to your satisfaction, Miss Flit. We strive to satisfy. It's sweet of you to ask, Mr. Wallace. I'm having a wonderful time. All this drama swirling around me. But I remain an oasis of calm in the hurly-burly of holiday madness. Oh, glad to hear it. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Anything I can do for you, Miss Flit? Oh, stop it, Wallace. You're next. Duncan, jealous! Oh, you like this, Wallace. I've been longing for a new look, and I quite fancy this one. Very incognito, don't you think? My own babies wouldn't recognise me in this get-up. 
Uh, I'm afraid fashion isn't really my forte, Miss Flit. Nonsense. What man is immune to the allure of a well-dressed woman? Your searchlight is just what West Wallaby Street Waterworld needed, Mr. Paneer. Everything satisfactory, I hope? No, not satisfactory at all. A certain Scottish gentleman has been deconstructing my constructions. Perhaps the management could have a word with him. I'm afraid Mr. McBiscuit is rather difficult to pin down. You've got to do something. If I can't finish my sandcastle, I'll have to insist on a refund. Your castle looks very handsome, Mr. Paneer. Such charming little bucket shapes. I do admire creative artists like yourself. Oh, thank you, Miss Flit. At least someone appreciates art and craft. Look, it's almost done. What do you reckon? Uh, very nice. That's the royal court where the king holds sumptuous banquets for all his royal chums. That's the Tower of Groceries where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. That's the Enchanted Tower, where the beautiful princess sleeps, dreaming of a successful marriage to a financially secure prince. That's the horrible dungeon, where the mean, bullying knight is kept locked in chains. I should look in on our other guests. But I'm nearly done. Just one last touch. There. The perfect finishing touch. The mark of finest quality produce. Ye. Miss Flit's going to be impressed. Oh, hi, she'll be ever so impressed, I'm sure. Oh, no. Uh, whoops, my foot slipped, silly me. <laughs> my castle, stomped on by a tartan heel. See what I have to put up with? A holiday's not a blinking holiday if I can't finish my sandcastle. Now I have to start all over. Enjoying your holiday, I hope, Major? Oh, yes, absolutely. Dashed comfortable billet you have here. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, we strive to achieve complete customer satisfaction. That wasn't so hard. Put that thing down and pay attention. Oh. I am about to reenact one of the greatest desert battles of history, the Siege of Aqaba. Not many know the tale. It was late 1914, or was it 1916? It was an even year of that, I'm sure. On the one side was a single British soldier, T.E. Lawrence, better known to you civvies as Sir Lawrence of Olivier. On the other, the invading army of the Ottoman Empire, thousands strong. You know the story. Lawrence single-handedly defended a desert fortress from a massive attack. He had only one rifle and no ammunition. He was all alone. Just like this, Lawrence watched the enemy from a secret vantage point sheltered by enormous red boulders. <laughs> anyway, as the enemy massed, vultures began to circle overhead, crying out in their desperate thirst for blood. Hmm. Anyway, now at this point your average Joe would have thrown in the towel and anything else he had to hand. But what do you think our Lawrence did? He took tea. Hmm. Anyway, Lawrence was about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... Oh, blast and bother. This isn't right. Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. Uh, 
anything I can do for you, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, dear. Oh, what a mess I am! But it's me own fault for letting that mangy McBiscuit get under me skin. Why should I care what he says? As me mum taught me, sticks and stones will break your bones, but silly names can never hurt you. Hey, here comes trouble! Yeah, big fat pudding! <laughs> big fat pudding? Though, oh, it's true enough, I know it. I'm out of shape for a beach holiday. Perhaps I should just get me refund and go home. Oh, no. That's kind of you. But it's no good. I can't be talked out of a mood like this, can I? Oh, well, I... Uh... It's not just me, is it? What do you think of Duncan McBiscuit? A sad thing. Do you reckon? I suppose he does look a bit sad if you squint at him, Reet. Oh, you're a Reet good listener, you are, Wallace. I should count me blessings. At least me new outfits. That's something, isn't it? It's a sign. You think so? A sign of things to come? New things that fit? Glad you're here, Wallace. Oh, what do I know? I'm going soft in the head, aren't I? Sharp as a knife. Well, now, that's kind of you to say so, Wallace. You know what? Winnie Gabberly's had enough of feeling sorry for herself. So what if I'm a bit like a pudding? I've tangled with giant bees, I have. I can take care of a bullying McBiscuit any day. Thank you, Wallace. You've a right kindly way with words, you have. Uh... Glad to be of service. I'll be fine now, Pat. Reckon I'll finish my story. Hey! In there, you big fuck! Shut your trap, you tart and tear away, or I'll box your ears! Hmm, I do like a good book. No need for a refund, then? Oh, no. I'm as happy as Larry me. Oh, another happy camper. Anything you need, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, no, dearie. I'm as happy as a sandboy. Thanks. Not supper time yet, is it, lad? Sorry about that. Hard at work, eh, Gromit? That's what I like to see. We'll soon have a house full of happy holiday makers, never fear. Oh, cracking idea, lad. Everyone loves a copper. You'd best attend to your pots and pans, eh? A bevy of brollies! To think of all the trouble I went through to get just one! Coming through! Ah, uh, Mr. McBiscuit, may I, uh, have a word? Oh! Um, later then. Crikey, the infrastructure's getting a lot of wear and tear. Trouble springs eternal, it seems. Very fashionable. Gloomy out there. 
safety first. All in working order. Mr. Wallace, I'd like a word with you, if you please. Enjoying your stay at West Wallaby Street, Waterworld, Constable? I'm this close to having your establishment shut down. Shut down? You heard me. These dogs are a public nuisance and an health hazard and all. Oh, dear. When bonkers, they did. And all because I tried to clear away that horrible little toy of theirs. I don't approve of litter, you know. I believe Miss Flitter... I've warned Felicity Flitter, no. And now she must face the full force of the law. I'm issuing a formal caution for the disruption of lawful quietude. It's the third I've had to write today. The third? Aye, the first two got eaten. Give this one to Miss Flit and tell her to remove her animals or I'll be forced to shut the place down. Needs ironing, it does. Hmm, well, that seems to be in working order. May I offer you a spot of tea, Major? Of course. Sharpens the wits. Ouch! I wouldn't want anyone to step on that toy by mistake. It's not a toy, and you can't have it. The battle isn't over. You're in luck, my boy. I was just about to reenact the Siege of Akamar. You know the story. Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. <laughs> anyway, vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. Just like this, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> just like this. Lawrence was about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... Oh, blast and bother. This is right. Not quite historically accurate, I'm afraid. I'll have to start again. Just a moment. It won't mind if I borrow this.
any interest in this? Perfect! Just like the great boulders of the Akbar Desert! You're in luck, my boy! I was just about to reenact the Siege of Akbar. Do you know the story? Sir Lawrence took cover under massive red boulders. Just like this. Vultures circled the sky, crying out for blood. Just like this, our Lawrence, cool as a cabbage, took tea. <laughs> Just like this. Lawrence was taking tea and about to dunk his digestive when suddenly... 10,000 howling Ottoman soldiers charged the fortress. Tea was ruined, obviously. But did Lawrence of Olivier give up? Never! He took his rifle and levered the great red boulders down the dunes, rolling them straight into the enemy horde. With the invaders in disarray, Lawrence, armed only with his bayonet, and still desperate for cover, counterattacked. He took them on one by one until he achieved total and complete victory! I'll just tidy this up. Enjoying your stay? Not until my castle is complete. Have a look. It's almost done. As you can see, I've rearranged everything. It's even better than before. I see. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. That's the horrible dungeon where the mean bullying knight is kept locked in chains. That's the royal court where the king holds sumptuous banquets for all his royal chums. That's the enchanted tower where the beautiful princess sleeps dreaming of a successful marriage to a financially secure prince. That's the Tower of Groceries, where the heroic young shopkeeper sells top quality produce. Impressive architecture, don't you think? Oh, uh, yes. Hey, this little fella might enhance your sandcastle. A knight to defend the castle, eh? Why not? It couldn't hurt. Just one last touch. There! The mark of finest quality produce. I can't wait to show Miss Flitch. And well, I'm sure she can't wait to see. Oh, no. Uh, oh, my foot! My poor tender foot! It was a blasted sand trap! Oh, 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 oh. Well, then. Should be able to work in peace now, I reckon. Oh, well, jolly good. Now for the finishing touch, the defender of the kingdom. However do you manage such lovely creations, Mr. Paneer? It's a knack, Miss Flit. If I hadn't made it into grocer school, I might have been an engineer. But of course, groceries are my first love. Ah, uh, anything else I can assist with? No, thank you, Mr. Wallace. You may consider me a happy camper and most satisfied customer. We do aim to please.
Miss Flit seems very excited about her new look. Blue and white stripes must be all the rage these days. Hello there. Constable Dibbins has requested... Constable Dibbins is mistaken. Boji Woo and Tiki Wee would never misbehave. They did seem a touch rambunctious. Oh, very well. Let's get this over with. Behave, or I'll have you banged up in the kennels. Ah, oh, that's more like it. What's this nonsense about my doggies? Ah, there you are, Miss Flit. Your doggies are causing a breach of the peace. They're behaving like, uh, well, like animals. <gasps> How could you say such a thing? Only telling it like it is. Disturbing the peace, are they? Well, they were until you came in. Constable, if I ever see my doggies behaving badly, I shall reprimand them myself, believe me. But just look at them. They're as sweet and innocent as pink icing sugar. But, but, but... Why don't you find some other tiny, defenceless creatures to harass and leave my babies alone? Babies? Hooligans, more like. Show that formal caution to Miss Flit. Oh, but I did. Then show her again. Sooner or later, she'll have to take it seriously. Any interest in this? Oh, thank you, Mr. Wallace. What a lovely scarf. Actually, it's a... Such vibrant colour and such a pretty pattern. It's perfect for my new look. Isn't it splendid? I have the scarf. I just need the glasses. Would you like these sunglasses? Oh, wonderful, Mr. Wallace. Very stylish. I'll use these for my new look. My new look is complete. Just a moment. You're in for a surprise. Ta-da! What do you think, Wallace? Am I not mysterious? Uh... Quite mysterious, yes. <gasps> oh, where's Felicity? Where did Miss Flit go? Uh... Here I am! <laughs> we do have fun, Wallace, don't we? Constable Dibbins was wondering... Again? Let's get this over with. Threatening behaviour towards an officer of the law, that's a serious offence, that is. Don't think I won't lock you up, cos I will. This is your final, final warning. <gasps> oh, gee, whoa! Take it away! How could you behave like this? Mummy is very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. And what did you do to upset my precious cupcakes like that? Cupcakes? My darlings, did the bad man upset you? Don't be scared. Mummy's here now. How about a little dressing up game to make it all better? Do you want to play dress up? Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, come along, my sweets. <sighs> She's lucky I didn't throw those mutts in the kennels. I were this close, I were. You can only push PC Ernest Dibbins so far.
I hope your holiday is proceeding in a satisfactory manner, Constable. Satisfactory? Hmm. Yes. Yes, indeed. Everything appears to be quite satisfactory, peaceful and in order. Thank you, Wallace. Champion, we're getting there. Ha-ha! <laughs> At last! A house full of satisfied customers, just as I predicted. I'd best tell Gromit to lay the table. I must compliment our host. I've had a cracking holiday. Oh, thank goodness for that. It was a near thing, though, wasn't it? Oh, smell those fish and chips. We can look forward to superior chow here in the officer's mayor's one. Mm. The tableware doesn't seem to be in breach of any health and safety regulations. Enforcement's the key, of course. You smell like heaven, lassie. Did you buy a new perfume for our date? Oh, really, Duncan? That's just the flower in my hair. And I'm not sure I'd call it a date. Uh, um, uh, before we tuck in, on behalf of the management, that is, Gromit and me, I'd like to welcome you all to our new venture. West Wallaby Street Water World, the only holiday destination with its own all-weather seaside in the cellar basement feature track. I have a few words track. to say myself. Raise your glasses. Raise them, I said. To a great day with a great lass, the sweetest sights I ever smelled. That's right, I'm talking about... Hey, who turned out the... Ah, what's all this? Who's there? Ivar! Thinking Nora, Did this is a rope do. That there do I can help with that now. This is life. Jenny, you're going to vanish. I'm going to sort it with me all oh, yeah. night. Everyone bring me my calm down, down as it. I must insist oh, on calm. Oh, this is not what it's done. Quiet! Oh, whatever's happening to me? Someone, please! Help! Help me, someone, please! Uh, there's someone here! Help me! I can't move! Thank you, whoever you are. I was this close to taking my last breath. You found me just in time. I've located the victim. Mr. McBiscuit has sustained a nasty knock to the noggin and don't remember now about it. Happily, he will recover. However, aggravated thumping is a serious offence, and I've no choice but to treat every one of you as suspects. Outrageous! <gasps> Would I never do Suspects? <coughs> Until our thumper is caught, nobody leaves this house. Nobody comes in, and nobody goes out. Not till I know the person who done it. I know who did it. Spies from abroad. Saboteurs from the South Sea. Thank you, Major. That's enough of your doolally chatter for now. 
Only cold hard facts can solve this mystery. Solve this mystery? That's right. Buy the book. You know, uh, burden of innocence and uh, proof of purchase and all that. That's our real investigations. Now, what's that contraption? My latest prototype, Constable. The Deductomatic Mystery Solver. Deductomatic? Is that what's been taking money out of my savings account? Oh, no, Mrs. Gabberly. The Deductomatic harnesses unused brain power to solve mysteries. If you're pointing the finger, Wallace, any accusation must be backed up by hard fact and proven according to the law. Well, I... Uh, that is, it should be working. Aha! Uh -huh, I've got it! All right then! Tell us, Wallace, who thumped Duncan McBiscuit? Who done it? Who done it? Whoa, that can't be right. We're waiting. Uh, 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 just a moment. Any idea who done it, lad? You wouldn't mind pointing him out, would you? It was Constable Dibbins. That's an outrageous slur. But you were sitting just by, Duncan, weren't you? Aye. And the police truncheon were invented for thumping, weren't it? Now you're in a pickle, Constable. I'm, 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 I'm completely innocent. I didn't do it. It's a logical impossibility, and you can't argue with logical impossibilities. I can argue the iron legs off a donkey, Mr. Gabberly says. Logic has no to do with it. Wallace, I'm sure you didn't mean to accuse me, did you? The deductomatic may need a bit more warm-up time. Would you like to reconsider your accusation? Oh, uh, yes. Nobody leaves the room until I say so. It was Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. <laughs> Two wee pups laying junk and low. That's daft, that is. <laughs> Silly, that. The very idea of accusing my dear doggies. How absurd. Aye, quite absurd. Absurd, eh? Nothing is absurd before the law. Here we go. It is the absurd claims the law takes most seriously. For if the absurd cannot expect justice and a fair hearing, then who among us can? He's got a point. We must treat this accusation according to the law. The law requires proof. Proof requires... Uh... Hold on. Proof requires three things. First, the motive. Why did the suspect thump Duncan McBiscuit? Second, the weapon. What was he thumped with? Third, a witness. Who can collaborate? Corroborate, said. Uh, back up your accusation. 
Do you have a motive, a weapon, and a witness, Mr. Wallace? Uh, I'll just recalibrate the inference -ometers. There we are. What'll it be? Motive, weapon, or witness? Hmm, where to begin? Right, that's the one. What's the one? Uh, motive. I've solved the motive. Excellent! Tell us why uh, um, Wadgy Podge and Tinky Pink thumped Duncan McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Can you spare a motive, lad? I if you've got one, give it here. Nobody leaves the room until I say so. The motive is Hooji Woo and Tinky Wee. Fascinating. Are you saying it was simply their own canine natures that motivated them to attack Mr. McBiscuit? That the wild animals within broke free and forced the adorable animals without to thump the Scotsman? Well, I, uh... I hardly think so, Mr. Wallace. Your motive doesn't stand up. Uh... Ooh. Perhaps I miscalibrated the conductivator, whatchamacallit. All right, that's enough of that. Everyone can go about their normal business. But remember, nobody leaves the house until the mystery is solved. Once I have the deductomatic properly calibrated, this case will be elementary, dear Gromit, elementary. In the meantime, why don't you, uh, sniff up some clues for the deductomatic to process, eh, lad? You might start with the constable there. I expect he's got some juicy leads. I've got the suspects right where I want them. Written down on the official constabulary notepad. I'll crack the case with this, I will. It's got to be one of these three, but which one? Do you sense something, boy? Yes. I'll have a little chat with the Major. Perhaps he knows something he doesn't know he knows. And if you don't believe me, I invite you to inspect the evidence. Are you having a laugh? Enough questions. We're wasting time. The spies could be signaling their ship. If they give away our position, we're done for. <sighs> All right. Yes. Fine. So tell me what these so-called spies of yours looked like. Don't mind if I do. It was dark. Dark as a darkened room. Then the door cracked open, and I saw them. Swarthy little men with sunken eyes and primitive tattoos dragging Duncan's limp body. Sailors, judging by their uniforms, natives of the South Seas, I'd say. Stake my reputation on it. Did they look like this? No, no, no. Eyes more sunken with heavy brows. That's better. Add nautical tattoos round their necks. And don't forget the uniform. There we are. A hint more menace. Just a hint now. Yes, now you've got it. Those are the villains I saw. Right, so this is what they look like, eh? 
post that picture to every Jack Tar in the Navy. We've got to stop them before they make landfall. That's just what I'll do. The man means well, but he's a couple of bricks short of the full hod. Good to see you, Private. Watch your hindquarters, Private. There are spies about. Saw myself dragging off that Duncan chap. Not a pretty picture. Checking provisions, eh? Good military planning. Who knows how long that fool of a civilian constable will keep us cooped up? Best start rationing now, before panic sets in and we have to eat our pack animals. For each other. Mr. Gabble is news agent. Now open for business. Is that a customer I hear? Customer? Busy day today. Oi! You want to shop here? You gotta follow my rules. Yeah! Take what you like and I'll put it on slate. Business will sort out payment later. Got that? Oi! And don't nick nothing while you're about it. Blimey! That were easy. I don't know why Winnie makes so much fuss. Now with 100% you are bossy wives! Mr. Gabberly promised he'd run shop for me. Imagine him downstairs, face to face with actual customers. He took quite a thumping, didn't he? Can't say he didn't deserve it. Still can't leave him to rot all on his lonesome. Someone's got to tend to the great lug. Oh. He's coming round. Oh, my head. Somebody stop the spinning. Is that a whirlpool I'm in? Don't fret, Patch, you've had a nasty knock. Did you see who thumped you? No, but I can almost remember what hit me. 
The terrible weapon that laid me low, it's... You saw the weapon, what hit you? Uh, I think so. It was... Oh, I can't remember a thing. My brain's been boggled. Ooh, you've got amnesia, you have. Amnesia? Oh, no, that as well as a bang to the head. Is it fatal? Just take things step by step, Chuck. What's the last thing you can remember? Well, I was upstairs getting set for a jump junior on slide, but something wasn't right. Them little dogs of Felicity's were underfoot and they wouldn't shut their yaps. Duncan McBiscuit doesn't take guff from yapping wee dugs, so I grabbed that bone toy of theirs and took it away. They didn't like it one bit. Oh, no! Best part was, when I squeezed the wee toy, it drove them crazy, because it made this noise. This noise. Oh, what was that noise? I can't recall. My brain's turned to haggis. Don't fret, Pat. Just rest. It'll come back to you. I just can't remember. Oh, that's no help. My head's as empty as a bagpipe's bladder. Think, McBiscuit. Think. Is that a customer I hear? You shouldn't eat candy floss, Mr. Paneer. Bad for your teeth. Oh, I'm not eating it. I just like having something to hold. You must try to stop worrying so. What? The thumper? Who knows where he'll strike next? I don't think there is a thumper. I think Duncan just fell over and wandered off by himself. He's a clumsy oaf, you know. Aye. He is heavy on his feet, that's for sure. He'll bounce back. He always does. It's Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee I'm worried about. Those silly accusations hurt their feelings. I just hope playing dress-up will lift their spirits. A new look is a tonic for the soul, don't you find? Afraid I don't know how to play dressing-up games as it happens. Doggy dress-up, silly. I just need to pick the right outfits. 
so many to choose from. Ah, oh, it's only you, Gromit. For a moment, I thought. Uh, well, never mind. I'm sorry, lad, but if you want some candy floss, you'll have to get your own. I'm rather attached to mine. of these suspects knows Summit, but who to question first? If I keep staring long enough, I'm sure I'll detect Summit eventually. Caught a scent, have you? Hmm, his motive is clear enough, but could this apparently gentle purveyor of fine groceries be a Jekyll and eyed character, perhaps? A vicious thumper in disguise? I must interrogate him! Put that candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. Ooh. I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you, or did you not, thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you, me. But not me. I didn't, did you? That's not right. Uh, fair was I. You're not me, and I, I did you not. I can't decide. So you didn't do it. No, 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 wait. Uh, I'm just a little nervous. You'll have to excuse me. If I thumped Duncan, would I be nervous? <laughs> of course I would. But I didn't, did you? I mean, not you. I, I would never say that, Constable. That is to say, you didn't, did you? I mean me. Me. I didn't, did me. Oh, Duncan. I didn't, did Duncan. But <laughs> nobody didn't, Duncan. I mean, somebody didn't. Naturally, of course. You agree with that, didn't you? I mean, not you. Me. But not I me. Wonder I wonder what the did best you. dressed That's dogs right. are wearing uh, this season. I. You're not me, and I did you not. Uh, so you didn't do it. No, 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 wait. Uh, I'm just a little nervous. You'll have to excuse me. If I thumped Duncan, would I be nervous? <laughs> of course I would. But I didn't, did you? I mean, not... All right, that's enough. Just you watch yourself, Mr. Paneer, or I'll be watching you. Got it? Not another word. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I'll have to spin open over. Do you like the pretty pictures? He thinks he's so important. Oh, Mrs. Gabbley is as cute as kittens. Or uh, strays, anyway. Oh, the mayor just seems to have lost his bearings. Not my best shot. I can't imagine Wallace at the real Blackpool. His holiday didn't turn out quite the way he planned, did it? He's like a little boy, crazy for candy floss. My poor little Duncan. All he wanted was to take me out on a date. Perhaps I'll let him, if we ever get out of here. He looks so happy. My poor little darlings. They love a fashion shoot, but they were so agitated they couldn't sit still. Do you know what upset them? Some horrid person stole Mr. Squeaky. Isn't that awful? Mr. Squeaky's only a bone, but he's absolutely their favourite toy. The three of them are inseparable. Personally, I think it was that constable. 
Who else could be so cruel as to steal from a couple of helpless little puppies? Oh, oh, you found it. Good boy. Now Poochie Woo and Tinky Wee can play sailor again. Hello there, Gromit. Would you like to play a dog in dress up? Oh, what a nice present. That's a stylish look. I do admire those sunglasses. I suppose they're back in fashion. Seems I'm something of a trendsetter. Ah, Gromit. You must know what the debonair dog likes. Why don't you help me pick an outfit for my precious darlings? Use your doggy fashion sense and choose your favorite hat, glasses, and collar. Jaunty. Aye, aye, Captain. Classic. Hoochie Woo and Tinky Wee will love this. Hoochie Woo, Tinky Wee. Time for dress up, my dears. Oh, look at this. Hello. You found Mr. Sneaky, you clever things. I was afraid he'd never turn up. Now we're really ready for some fun, aren't we? Let's get dressed up. The poor things are shy. Would you mind leaving us alone for just a little while? Aren't you cute? Yes, you are. <laughs> Run along and play. Does the nice doggy woggy want to choose another outfit? Show me what doggies like best. Jaunty. Aye, aye, Captain. The very latest. Good dog. Nice choice. Hoochie woo. Tinky wee. It's dress up time, my darlings. Don't fuss, sweeties. You can go back upstairs in a minute. Right now, I need you to sit still. No help at all. Ah, I'm about as sharp as a butter knife. That's it. 
the sound of the toy. Now I remember. Go on, then what happened? Oh, I kept the toy and shut the wee doggies down the slide. They didn't like that one bit neither. <laughs> I was having a grand time. I wanted a wee picky to remember by, so I went down to that photo thingamajig. I struck a manly pose and I was... I was... Uh, oh, Crivens, it's all fading away. I'll be forgetting my own name next. Oh, don't get yourself in a twist, love. It'll come back to you. You can do this, Ernest Dibbins. What is it, boy? Hmm. She clearly had a motive. And perhaps under that soft, knitted exterior lurks the soul of a hardened thumper. I must question her. But you do admit you had a motive. Eee, hey, happen I did. And I could have thumped him, buried him and drowned him twice over since I've been down here. None of you lot seems worried about that, though. That can't be everywhere, Miss Gabberly. Not with so many suspects to interview. More important than tending the victim of the crime, is it? Look here. I can't stand around chatting all day. I have a thumper to catch. See that you don't leave the house. This is useless, and so am I. Oh, that's no help. I'll take a wee photo and doing something. Oh, I'm an idiot. It's no good. Don't fret now. It'll come back. That's right. I remember. Go on. I was taking a picky, holding a stick of candy floss. Oh, I love that stuff, me. I got my hunger up. Just then. Like an answer to my prayers, the gong sounded for supper. I came to table, and there I found heaven, my lovely lass, Felicity. I remember the fine, sweet smell of her, like... She smelled like... Um... Oh, blast it all! My nose is a blank! I cannot recall! Give it time, love. You'll remember. That's it! The sweet scent of felicity! How could I forget? I remember! I remember everything now! I'm cured! You've cured my ham knees! You cured me, and... and... I were a right numpty with you, weren't I? Still are, I reckon. But don't go weepy on me now. Tell me what happened after you sat down to supper. I was making a toast. When the lights went it, my eyes were adjusting to the dark when... Thump! <gasps> who thumped you? Oh, I never saw who, but I saw what. The supper gong mallet! That's what hit me! The supper gong mallet? You sure, Chuck? Sure? Oh, aye! Look, 
Look what it did to me. Ooh. Me, that's a crime, that is. No wonder your mind's been a blank. What kind of person would do that? They should be locked up. You go back to sleep now, love. Get some rest. That's an extra fluffy batch. Can't do any harm to trade up. Just this once. Oh, crikey, it's heavy. Must be family-sized floss. It's got to be one of these three, but which one? Do you sense something, boy? Hmm, maybe this time I'll get some sense out of him. And put that candy floss down while I'm interviewing you, if you please. Ooh. I'll ask you again, and this time I want a straight answer. Did you, or did you not, thump Duncan McBiscuit? Did you not? I mean, you did not. Uh, that is to say, me, not you. I mean, I mean, not you. <laughs> I've heard quite enough, thank you. That's enough, I said. Phew. What happened to my little friend and protector? I have to spin up another. for the deductomatic to process. Eureka! I've got it! You sure this time, Mr. Wallace? I'll summon the suspects. Right. You have accused Felicity's diminutive dogs of thumping Duncan McBiscuit. To prove it, you need a motive, a weapon, and a witness. Where do you want to start? And the motive is... Can you rustle up a motive, man? The motive is... this chew toy. Really? The pups are very attached to that toy. I know from bitter experience. Of course they are. Mr. Squeaky was a present from their mumsy. That doesn't make it a motive for hurting Duncan, though. Oh, yes, it does. 
Duncan stole the toy from them doggies. Told me so himself. He never did. Oh, he did. If Mr. McBiscuit did indeed take their favourite toy, that could well be a motive for thumping. But why would Duncan want to take Mr. Squeaky? The very idea is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Possibly. But on the balance of probabilities, spot on. I believe this motive meets the test of the law. You're on the way to proving your case, Wallace. We know the motive. What's next? Of course. Now we'll get the facts. Get what facts? Uh, the weapon. I've determined the weapon. Well done. Tell us what. Um, what you podge in Winky T used to thump Duncan? Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Do you have anything resembling a weapon, lad? I could use one sharpish. The weapon is this mallet. Eee, you bang on the money this time, Wallace. I remember now. That's what it Duncan all read. He said so himself, and he's got the dent in his bonds to prove it. It all makes sense now. That's a maladjusted mallet, all right. Maladjusted? What makes you say that? Well, it looked all fluffy and pink and delicious. But underneath it were rock hard and not very tasty. Uh, thank you, Mr. Finnear. It appears that the mallet is indeed our weapon. Well done, Wallace. The case against uh, them two dogs is coming together. The only piece of the puzzle left is the witness. Lacking. Now we'll know the truth. The truth about what? Uh, the witness. I've identified the witness. Good show. Tell us who witnessed, um, uh, uh, Tinky Woo and Potty Wee assaulting Mr. McBiscuit. Well, out with it, man. Uh, uh, um, just a moment. Uh, who would you pick for a witness, lad? This is Major Crumb. Yes. Quite right. I saw him. He was black as pitch. The door cracked open, and I saw him dragging away the body. Short, hairy fellows with sunken eyes and tattooed necks. Sailors from the South Seas. Spies! Spies from abroad! Not this again. I think we've heard enough. Wait, Major. Did your spies look like them too? Lord heavens! That's them, all right. I'd recognize them anywhere. Put those spies in irons. That would be silly. They're puppies. Dogs of war, more like. What war? Oh, there is no war. What? All right, let's let sleeping dogs lie, shall we? The main point is, the Major saw these two dragging away Mr. McBiscuit. Isn't that right, Major? It most certainly is. In that case, according to the law, he is a legitimate witness. Wallace, you've shown us motive, weapon, and witness. And according to the powers vested in me as an officer of the law, I now pronounce the case solved. Duncan McBiscuit was thumped by a mallet because of a stolen chew toy. The crime being witnessed by Major Crumb. The perpetrators of this evil deed were none other than the canine criminals Poojie Woo and Tinky Wee. No, it can't be. My darlings are precious, kind, insu wincy doggies, not hooligan hounds. I knew it. Wallace knew it. Put him in chains. Throw away the key. Batten down the hatches. Cabin doors to manual. All in a day's detective work. Oh, 
I really do feel fit. Ooh. Oh dear. Lad, the drain must have come unplugged. That's handy. Oh, seems to have created a bit of a current. Help, Gromit! I've got that sinking feeling. We're all going down the drain! Get them off, Gromit! Heavens above! They followed their toy down the drain. Well, I'll give them one thing. They're dogged to the end. Welcome aboard, lad. Just a short jump to dry land, eh? No, no, Gromit! I'm about to be flushed! Do something! We've made it, Gromit. We're back on dry land. That's one you owe me, pal. Um, I do hope everyone's had an unforgettable holiday, and that you'll consider visiting West Wallaby Street Waterworld again next year. a clean-up job in front of us. No time for dawdling. Romit! Romit!
Hmm, must be the breeze. Miss Flit says the strays have been making mischief all over town. On Tuesday, Mrs. Gabbley's shop was terrorized by a gang of terriers. No doubt they'll come to heel once they've a proper roof over their heads. I'm sure everyone will give generously at the fair to build them a new home. I can't be the only dog lover in town. Thank you, Nora Gromit, wild dogs, stray scoundrels, mangy good-for-nothing mongrels mangling me machine. They must be some of the escapees. Oh, no. Me crank. Me lever. The flavor engraver, the brains of our custom flavor scanner lab, it's been scrambled. The four-legged fiends. I'm sorry, lad, but this is some serious damage. I suppose it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'll tinker with the flavor engraver if you track down our filched crank and our lifted lever. And this cute one's going to need to be calmed down as well. Mind you, it'll take a month of ice cream sundaes to put things right if I can't patch things up. You've got to get them in order if we're going to have the Infini flavor ready for the fair this weekend. Come on, lad, you're a dog. You can reason with them. All that hard work fouled up by a few rogue whippets. We're going to have to calm that one down if we're ever going to roll this machine out of here. Your old toy certainly did the trick, didn't it, lad? Oh my, you used to be so attached to it. Took quite a spell to wean you off it, in fact. Now we can focus on getting this machine up and running. Oh, Gromit, this machine might not be completely cream cracked after all. Let's have a shifty. It's still a bit uh, discombobulated, lad. He swiped it again! What's he got there, lad? I think he's helped himself to our valuables. Not quite done painting the sign yet, Gromit. That's a nice shade of blue, though, wouldn't you say? That sign would be a nice finishing touch if we could get the machine back up and running. Careful, Gromit. The Infini flavor motor is volatile without its crank.
Any luck with the mischief makers? With a combination of infrared scanning and molecular chemistry, the flavor engraver can imbue our ice cream with any flavor imaginable. 